All right, so we are getting the few last things wrapped up for King of Hammers. We've got to make a bar that goes from strut to strut. We've got to relocate the overflow bottle. We're going to relocate it over to the passenger side. All we got to do, we're going to have to cut this bracket off over here. I'm going to have to rebend that. And then Colton, he'll be here in just a minute. He's got a list going for things that we need to do before we can take off. So we've got a few things to get done, but I'm going to start by doing the bar. So I'll get a piece of cardboard, we'll make that, we'll go over to the bender, we'll bend the bar and we'll put the bar in. Yeah, so we'll do 4.5. All right, so, so 2.25. Okay, so from face of bend, it's 2.25 off center. So we're gonna go 4.5 total. Now from the back of bend, we're gonna go extra inch on each side. That doesn't make sense to most, but it makes sense to me. All right, so this is Colton's first time experiencing the pipe bender. So we'll, we're gonna put the face of the bend or the start of the bend right here. We'll bend it 45 degrees, and then we'll mark the back of bend and we'll go one inch past that and we'll make a cut. This is where I normally screw up and I don't mark the back of the bend. So you always want to mark it after you bend. I always back. do, because my measurement's going off the back of bend. So we're going to go one okay. inch past and that's where we're going to make a cut. We'll set this up in here. We'll make our other bend. And in theory, this should fit. Everything's always in theory, because you never know. That should fit. You can see we're doing everything by hand. When we come back from hammers, we're bringing back an Ameribraid belt sander. And it is gonna be a game changer. It'll make this five seconds worth of work. We're gonna be going down, actually checking out their manufacturing facility and bringing us back an Ameribraid unit. Oh, she perfect. Oh yeah. What do you think, Hillbilly? Is it level? Or is just everything point, around it? At this point, nothing's off. level. Is the Bronx Star level? <laughs> this is <laughs> level. We can stick a level on there and it'll sit perfect. I doubt it. What in the heck feed is this on? 18 gauge. Rusted exhaust gauge. Hillbilly had it real low for his rusted out exhaust. So I'm gonna go tack this other side. Hillbilly's gonna be plasma cutting off a bracket for the overflow. And then Colton's gonna let us know what's on his little list for us. He's like our mother. Try and do it without burning everything on the other side. <laughs> All right, we're just putting our food grade anises on. When we took it off, it comes out, it goes in, it's super tight. Even though this anti-seize is food grade, we're not gonna make Hillbilly try it. Whoa, you did not. whoa, did you actually Hillbilly, lick it? look, Hillbilly, do not try it. Tastes like vanilla You're ice cream. You're supposed to fake lick it. Tastes like vanilla, maybe vanilla frosting. Can you actually lick it? No. Oh, I thought you really did. <laughs> that was a prank gone wrong. <laughs> right, let's go back to work. <laughs> Strut tower is installed oh. and welded. So Colton's gonna put the battery back in. I'm gonna get to work on the overflow tank. We already showed you where we're gonna put it. I'm just gonna weld it. No. I'm gonna expertly get Colton's assistance right here. And that'll give enough room that the wiring can go behind. Do Don't let move. it move. Do not move. You moved. Don't move. Don't move. Colton, don't move. He moved. And there you have it, kids. Installed. All right, so I'll get the hoses all routed and we'll have that finished. Okay, you ready to see my CAD? How do you know the degrees? Who I'm degrees? smart. Who degrees that for you? I'm smart. Did you actually degree it yourself? It's my eyeballs. He had oh, a little is. thing to measure. Oh, okay. That degree finder you have. All right, so here's what's going on. Overflow. Done. Secured. Overflow line. Zip tied. Overflow line to radiator. Zip tied. Bar. Done. Oh, where's your list? Yeah, yeah. we need it. Colton, here, give Colton the list. Mother is gonna read the list off. Bronx star, front bar. Done. Working on skid plate. That's in process. Okay. Overflow. Done. Cut old bracket off. That is it. That really That's it? For the Bronx star. Oh, Super B needs off trailer. Bronx star needs on trailer. Bus, clean it out, put away in safe place. Load bucked up. That's done. Speaking you, of... You loaded the bucked up? No. So I'm gonna show you guys something. Yesterday, 
We took you guys with us and we went up to the bucked up headquarters in American Fork, Utah. And this is what we got. Corey, roll the tape. So he claims these are the good flavors, not the giveaway ones. So yes, we're getting them for free to take to King of Hammers for you guys, but hopefully they're good flavors. I've never tried them, but we're going to. They look so big back there. Just like that. I don't know what we're gonna do with it, but we got it. Take it to King of Hammers. All right, so we have an idea. Hillbilly measured and the pallet of bucked up will fit in the bus if we take the top layer off. So let's go out while it's still light, get the bus. I'll go get the forklift, let's load the pallet. So Hillbilly forgot to mention, yeah, we gotta at least pull the two back seats. Um, nine sixteenths and half inch. Holy crap, that looks like a lot of work. All right, so we just decided Colton and Hillbilly are gonna pull these seats. So I'm gonna go back in and start cutting out metal for the skid plate and then we'll get that bent up and you're coming with. All right, so this is Hillbilly's CAD drawing. Total length is 30 inches. That says 25 inches. That says 30 yeah, from inches. Bend to bend is five inches. So you have a so you have 15, band, five inch, band, 30. Okay, so that would be 15 inches to there. Yeah. That would be five inches to there. Yeah. And that would be 10 inches to there. Because that looks like I need 15 inches, 25 inches, and 30 inches. So now that I know his thought process. it's not 10 inches here, it's only five. Because 25 to 30 is only five. Oh, five, whatever. I, I was thinking 10. Okay, so anyway, it's even more wrong. So this is five inches. <laughs> this is five inches. Yeah, 15 to 25 is 10. Oh, okay. 15 to 25. <laughs> I'm so confused. I said it right, but I said it backwards. Okay, so 15, 10, and five. Yeah. I think, I, think <laughs> I don't know if I trust this, but we're gonna make it. And this is a lot of wasted metal if it doesn't work. And then right here, one inch in, and then these two you can space evenly between those. All right, let's get to it. So we have to unload them anyways by hand or... 37 and 3 quarters oh. by 52 and 3 quarters. I don't remember the measurements. Do you remember the measurements, Colton? What's well, this one, though? I think that's too big. Yeah. Let's remeasure. This is sitting at 40 inches. So it looks like wait, we wait, get wait, a wait. hand unload at all. Let's show them your measuring device. <laughs> it really got us all excited. I had myself excited. Looks like we're hand unloading it all. All right, well, they are out there figuring out the bucked up. I am going to cut this plate out. So I went ahead, got it all drawn up. Now I put it over here on my magic table. And we're going to cut out the skid plate. Then we got to bend it. So once it's cut, we'll deburr it, put it in the bender, bend it, and hopefully it fits. I'm going off the Hillbilly's measurement. So hopefully he measured correctly and he didn't use a wire like he did on the bus. If he used a wire, this isn't going to fit. You ready? Ready. We feel honored that have to unload. I think it's like 200 and something cases. Why don't we just grab the grinder and cut yeah. it? I think it's 200 and something cases that we're putting in the bus. We're gonna take it to Kings of Hammer. We're gonna give it out to people. I think you gotta show the Onyx app to get a free bucked up three. Number one. We're halfway there. Hillbilly just told me he's getting buck fever loading all this bucked up. Last one. And that's how it's done. Hillbilly, is this really happening? Is it that time? <laughs> it is. It's time to get this loaded so we can head out to California first thing in the morning. Did you guys hear that? Hillbilly himself said it's time to start this thing up, pull it out. We're gonna go load it on the trailer so we can leave first thing in the morning to and King it's gonna be the first test run. What better place to do it than out of state? But first, we gotta see if he'll pull on the trailer. That's the first test. <laughs> oh! Uh, Already did a burnout. You gonna do it? Oh, hold oh, it. Hold oh, it. Hold 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 it. It's a little wide for the trailer, so we're trying to figure out where we want to park the bed. We got it up over the wheel wells, but it's the back tires. I didn't go nowhere. Got the Bronx start all strapped down. Just gotta wait for tomorrow, and then we'll be on our way down. So Thursday, I'm hoping to be out on the trail and testing things out on this. I'm hoping nothing breaks, because every time I took it out, something's broke. I hope that curse is gone when I changed the motor. I hope that curse went with the motor and that transmission and transfer case. And this thing just does phenomenal. Hope, 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 hope. 
All right, so we are getting ready to go on an adventure to King of the Hammers. We're taking the Bronx Star and we're taking the Onyx Off-Road Bus. Now this bus may not look like much, but one day it's gonna be an awesome four-wheel drive event machine. But I wanna take a second and thank Onyx Maps for sponsoring today's video. And not only did they sponsor our video, they're taking us to California so we can enjoy the Bronx Star and hopefully conquer Chocolate Thunder. But what I wanna to talk to you guys about today is Onyx Off-Road's maps. Now they have made an entire map system of King of the Hammers and they are offering it free to anybody that's attending and anybody that downloads the app. So if you go into the app store or you go to onyxmaps.com and you get the map on your phone, click this QR code right here and it will actually take you to King of the Hammers map. And you can look at Hammer Town, Chocolate Thunder, you can look at Turkey Claw, you can look at the back door, you can look at the entire race course that they're gonna be racing at King of the Hammers. And you can do an interactive, look where the food's at, look at where everything's at inside the app on Onyx Maps. Don't wait, they're gonna be giving you a seven day free trial. Go, download the app, get on it, stay safe while you're out recreating. They have over 10,000 blue trails mapped out so that when you're in the mountains or you're out on the course recreating, you can get home safe. They have offline maps, they have online maps. They have a lot of really cool features that you need to go check out. Make sure you download it and follow along while we're at King of the Hammers. Let's go. All right, so we got up this morning at like 6 a.m. We got Hillbilly in the bus, Colton's driving. I built a thumbnail and we got the Bronx turd on the trailer. Hillbilly just called me and said, hey, the bus is barreling smoke and it's in limp mode. Like, what? No way. What? No way. So we are illegally turning around in Juarez, Mexico through the median and headed to find him. It's lost power and is blowing smoke. So we're gonna go figure out what's going on with the bus. This is just our luck. <laughs> we get the Bronx start running, the bus has problems. Well, here's the problem. We got 1,200 pounds of bucked up energy drink inside that bus. <laughs> so if all those fails, we're transferring it into here and leaving the bus. So we just found him on an off ramp. Let's go check him out. Hopefully it's nothing, but we'll see. What's it leaking? I don't know, there's big, it is a, it's dripping. Is it? Oh, it is. Is that oil or? Oh, that's oil. Huh. That's oil. There is no oil. Yeah, it's coming out of the bottom. That explains why it shuts off. It had no power. Injection runs off oil pressure. Look. Oh. <laughs> there's a big old puddle of oil under it. And for the record, we checked the oil and it was full, so. Oh yeah, you it can tell how much it. oil is on the ground. Drain plug's gone. What? Drain plug is gone. No way. Yeah. What? I stuck my finger where the drain plug <laughs> was. Yeah, there is no drain plug. Like, like it's gone. Bye. See you in Let's chat. Is there threads? Could we go get a drain plug and put oil in it? It felt like there's threads. <laughs> what? Stick your finger in there. No, no, I believe you, but you didn't, you didn't blow it up, did you? No, it shut down. Okay. So. Let's go to Richfield. Let's go get a drain plug and oil. All right, this might, I mean, this is a disaster, but it might be not so much disaster -y. So on a 7.3, the injectors run off of oil pressure. All diesels. Looks like injectors run off uh, oil pressure. Listen to this, this is wisdom. I don't know a lot, but I do know that this one runs off of oil pressure. So when the injectors lose oil pressure, they lose fuel pressure. So you lose a drain plug. You lose all the oil. <laughs> you lose all the oil. You lose everything. But hey, that's a good sign that it's leaking some oil because then it wasn't starving. Yeah, no, no, no. Completely so we didn't oil. blow it up. We didn't blow it up. Let's go. So we made it back to Richfield. We found a local Napa Auto Parts. So we're going to go get some oil, a drain plug, a funnel, pretty much all the stuff that we have at the shop that we don't have with us. And yes, I'm being chauffeured because I hate driving. All right, so we just got helped by a super cool dude named Wes at the Napa here in Richfield, Utah. We got us four gallons of Dello. We got us a funnel. We got some rags. We got some towels and some gear oil for the front of the Bronc turd. So we're going to head back into the canyon. Hopefully it's not damaged and we continue on. But if not, we're unloading all the bucked up, putting it in the back of the truck and we're headed to California. If you look real close right there, you can see a stain of oil. So this bus, it took a while to lose all 15 quarts of oil. So we're pulling up on the bus. We're gonna back that thing up so we're not laying in an oil slick. We'll get a drain plug in it, get oil in it, hopefully fire this baby up and get back on the road. We're just doing our part and re-oiling the tar. So we got a little 
Spill, let's back it up some more. We'll get the drain plug in first and then get oil in it. A little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. Apparently, whoever put this in last obviously just didn't tighten it because the threads are fine. Oh, great. What? Serpent seam belt's torn too. <laughs> this oil is so cold. Should have got gloves. We're like in the shaded area. Everywhere else is sunny. Shaded, windy. Yeah. Um, you don't think that we'll have to re-bleed the injectors, do you? No. So what does it run? How does the oil, how does this work? There's a oil pressure sensor. If it's not reading correctly or reading at all, and the oil going into the injectors, it's not pumping. So I don't know the theory behind it, exactly why, how it... Other than hopefully it protected it. Them old diesel, they shut down with no oil. Yeah, cause them outlets is they'll, they'll just run through the no yeah. pen. No oil. <laughs> they'll just keep going. They don't care. It's like no oil? Yeah, yeah. Sender. So hey, everybody, go outside right now. Go check your drain plug. Unless you change your own oil. Well, no, even then, make sure she's tight. All right, I got carried away. She got a little extra oil, but this thing's an old girl. So she probably leaks a little. We're gonna try to see if it fires up. <laughs> Listen to see if it runs, and if it doesn't runs, then it's staying here. And then we have to unload all the yeah. bucked up all, again? Yeah, then we have to unload 1,200 pounds of bucked up energy drinks. Fire in the hole! Kung, kung, <laughs> kung. <laughs> Trying. Rev it to the moon. Yep, that's all the motivation I need. Don't stop till you hit California! Here's your daily dose of motivation. If you lose your oil, just put more in it. You'll be fine, <laughs> I think. All right, so we went ahead and passed the bus. The bus is burning off about 13 and a half quarts of oil that got spattered underneath the underside of the bus. They're just too smoky for us. Hillbilly will catch up. We got so lucky. We're having a moment that couldn't have worked out any better. How did it drive? Good. <laughs> we got so Service lucky. Engine light soon came on. Well, it needs an oil change. <laughs> <laughs> it needed. Yeah, it just needs normal. Just needs a normal change. Now it needs a filter. Oh, do change. we have the key for this? Oh, it's unlocked. <laughs> I thought we were gonna be in trouble. We already filled it once. Yeah, that's true. All right. We're gonna go in and get us some breakfast burritos. Hey, the cashier, because my card doesn't work out here. And then. We're continuing on. All right, so it's been a long day of driving. We haven't filmed anything because we've been driving for five and a half hours. So Hillbilly's in the bus still, just trucking along, just perfect. We got Colton driving, still his passenger princess over here. Still driver. <laughs> just kidding, I'm really not, it was a joke. But we've made it into Las Vegas and it's about that time that we need to go and eat. So we're gonna head over to a place called the Taco Stand. Now this is probably the best tacos I've ever had in my entire life, but aside from that, they have the best churro you will ever eat in your entire life. So I'm gonna tell you a funny story. So my buddy Damon, he's the rep for SATA. It's our paint guns. Anyway, we were down to SEMA and he put together a friend dinner night and we got a party bus. And we went out on Wednesday night of SEMA and we went to a place called the Taco Stand and he thought it was a sit down restaurant. So we pull up in this party bus. There's like 15 of us. We get out. It is a hole in the wall taco stand. We were all kind of like, oh crap, what are we doing here? And it turned out to be so good, I was forbidden from going to this place by the boss. She said, you will not go get tacos from the taco stand without me. There's a cop. So she said, you will not go get tacos without me or get a churro. And I'm like, okay, I won't. And I was going to respect that. Well, then she called me and she's like, so are you going to go get tacos? And I was like, no, you said no. And then she told me that we could go get tacos. So we're getting the tacos. So we made it to the taco stand. You can't really see us. So Hillbilly got lost, but I found him. Where's the bus? Way over there. I was gonna try to bring that in here. You didn't want to park the bus in a parking stall? No. Well, we have waited 755 hours to get tacos and churros. If you guys didn't do Mach 90, oh, I would have to keep up. It's our fault. I knew it. And we're headed in to get the best churros on the planet. Dude, be prepared for the best so tacos of your life. So our churros will be up in 20 minutes, but it's 100% worth the wait. I'm excited. All right, this is Hillbilly's first time eating a churro at the taco stand. Let's see. 
Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad he went first. Oh, jeez. Amazing. Good. Good. It's so good, isn't it? I think you've ruined me. I think we've been ruined. The boss is so mad we're here. All right, we're going to eat these and get on the road. All right, so last night, we took the long way out of Vegas. The tacos and the churro, 10 out of 10. Oh, I don't even have words. No. Colton had to tell his wife. Yep, I have to take it there someday. It was phenomenal. Seriously, it's the best tacos, the best churros I've ever had in my whole life. I highly recommend it. Go to the taco stand in Las Vegas. Thank you, Damon, for accidentally taking us all to the taco stand by mistake. Anyway, we made it to Joshua Tree, California. We're headed over to Kika Hammers. It is raining and there's a flood warning. So we're just gonna mosey our way over there and go have some fun. Hey. All right, so we just went and got IV injections. So we're all a little dehydrated. We've been working hard. We wanted to get some vitamins. So Colton got it and I got it. Getting an IV drip. What do you think? Not for me. And now we're going to head back over and find us some food and then go out on and hopefully find a trail to take the Bronx Star on. <laughs> we're going to go find us some pizza. pizza. Billy's hungry. I'm hungry. Colton's hungry. But we're feeling good. That IV drip. And we're not screaming for ice cream. That was on point. We're not screaming for ice cream. That's what Hillbilly just said. So overall, King of Hammers turning out pretty cool. It's our first time and we're enjoying it. So it's winding down towards the end of the day and there's a lot of stuff about to happen tonight. So we've got to try to get our bearings, figure out where we're going, but I think I think we're gonna head over to the three-wheeler races, the Ultra Three. Right. Hey, how are you late today? <laughs> All right, this is King of the Hammers, the frame, but it's hotter than hot. One bite. I can't. It's about a two. Let's go. There's some axial things over here I want to go look at. Those little axial RC rock crawlers are so cool. I've got to get one for Lincoln, probably one for Adley, and one for me. We're not sure what to do. There's somewhere there's a three-wheeler track. So we're going to go find it. It's going to be our mission to take the Bronx Star and go find where they're racing three-wheelers. Uh, please? What? All right, so as we were walking out, I almost forgot. We got to go to the Toyota Racing Development booth and check out the Land Cruiser from SEMA. This has got a TRD racing engine in it. 725 horsepower. It's a TRD NASCAR Cup 358 cubic inch V8 engine. Here you have it. 1966 Toyota FJ45 pickup. Not just a pretty face. This thing was at SEMA. They've got it out here on the lake bed. They're racing it, they're running it. It is dirty and it looks awesome. This is what I want to do to my FJ55. I want to paint it, I want to powder coat it. I want to make it look so good. And then I want to go get it dirty. All right, so we're going to go find Chocolate Thunder. No, actually, we're gonna go find the three wheelers first and then maybe go up to Chocolate Thunder. But things get a little bit crazy at night. There's lots of people out and about. I just got told that there's like 80,000 people here. I don't know if that's accurate, but it I sounds pretty cool. My chariot waits. All right, so we found the TP. Here's gate one. We're gonna head for it. All right, so we're gonna go check out the Ultra 3 three-wheelers. So they've got the cutest little set of three-wheelers over here, and we might be able to get somebody to jump on the track because they're not doing any races tonight like we thought. They did them on Tuesday night. We'll show you guys a little clip right here that we found on Instagram. <laughs> So it would have been super cool to be here in person and see them racing, but we're going to do the next best thing. We're just going to watch one go around the track. That thing's a ripper! Yeah. I think we need some three-wheelers. I'm thinking I need a Honda 70. Nope. If any of you we have all a dude, we could start a Honda hey, 70 game. We need like 10 Honda 70s for an extra, for a recreational activity. So if anybody out there has any 
Honda 70s, please, please let us know. We need three wheelers, 10. not four wheelers. Yeah. Honda 73 wheelers, we need some. If you have a Honda 73 wheeler, send me an email at cars at robbylayton.com. All right, so this is Adam here. He started the Ultra 3 Racing. That's these little three wheelers that we just showed you guys. They've got a really cool campsite here. They're sitting on an acre and a half. Hammertown Heights. So we are in Hammertown Heights. So they have an acre and a half of real estate where they camp every year and they put on this awesome race on Tuesday nights at King of Hammers. So. Super cool to meet you guys, and Thank thanks for showing us the three wheelers. And if you guys want to check out more about the race, and go to Ultra Three Racing on Instagram and check out what they've got going on. On our way out, we saw something super cool. So there's a group of people that made King of the Canners. So they put these VP racing barrels around with can crushers. So if you have a can from your Coca-Cola, you can crush it, and drop it right down into the barrel. So not only does it help clean up, but you can recycle it too. Cool. Look at it out there. Yeah. All right, well, we hit 2.30 by the time we hit the top of the hill. So that means it yeah, needs look at a that. cooling fan. A little steamy. We're going to let it cool down here while we go spectate. Go check out some of the Chocolate Thunder. Look at that. That's legitimately like Salt Lake City. There's so many people here. This is such a cool experience. The Bronx Star didn't overheat. The radiator cap was only on halfway. It's probably from me. I was just waving. Look, it's steaming it's, like a demon. It's still overheating. Oh, look, Bronco next to Bronco. <laughs> this FJ55 is pretty well still an FJ55. It has an LS, but it is sweet. Ours is going to have a roof, but and we're also going to have 42-inch tires. There's so many different vehicles here. If you need inspiration, this is where you get it. I think that's what Day Job Blue Dory's going to look like. Sometimes you're on the road looking at scenery. Next thing you know, you're in the scenery looking at the road. <laughs> so we're currently three quarters of the way up Chocolate Thunder, and we're just checking out the scenery. We got an XJ that's now part of the scenery because he's stuck on a rock. We got another vehicle coming in to try to rescue him. We got about 10,000 people just scattered around the mountain watching these guys become part of the scenery. But I can't think of a better way to be spending my night in California in the cold than with Colton and Hillbilly on a mountainside watching people get stuck.